So should you take out financing for a car if you're already debt free? We're going to talk about that in this video. All right, so should you finance a car if you're already debt free? I mean, the answer is it really depends, right? Yeah, I mean, if you are in a situation where your car is no longer safe to drive, or if that car is really starting to become a money pit, yeah. where you're spending you know, thousands of dollars at a time to get things fixed on right. it, and if you're in a situation where, let's say both of you have jobs where mm -hmm. it's not really practical for you to carpool together, then you know perhaps it could be something that you consider. Right, and for us, we are passionate about personal financial well-being and, and just being good stewards of that. And it was a, a tough decision for us when we found ourselves in a situation where we had to evaluate if we should finance a car. Exactly, so just to give a little backstory, so earlier in 2020, right before the pandemic hit, we had had all of our cars paid off. Yep. Um, and for my car, we had planned to, you know, at least hold on to it for a couple more years. I knew it was starting to get on its last leg, but I mean, guys, it was a, it was a faithful one. I had this old Ford 2002 Explorer and it had over 235,000 miles on it. It had been in the family since 2002. That's crazy. But we reached a point to where we learned that it probably would fall off of the wheels or yeah. the wheels probably would fall off at some point and you know it was probably in our best interest to just go ahead and get a new car primarily just for safety reasons right exactly <laughs> so. exactly and for us we both work full-time at jobs that we do have to commute to so it wasn't realistic for us to necessarily try to carpool with one car in consistency but we broke it down in three main areas of focus that that really allowed us to put boundaries on what car we would choose to get and why The first boundary that we put in place was that we had to be able to pay 25% of the full cost of the car up front. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we were putting ourselves in a position where we could pay off the car quickly and efficiently, and 25% allowed us to know that we could probably afford a car within the $18,000 range. And the second factor really had to deal with the quality of the car that we were willing to buy. We obviously could have you know, put more money towards buying a car that was within the range of us paying it all in cash. Um, but for us, we wanted to make sure that we were buying something that would be able to last us for at least another 10 years, something that we could get a lot of longevity out of. Um, so we did a lot of research. Uh, I love doing car research. So, you know, we wanted to have something that was durable, something mm -hmm. that was sustainable. Right. We looked up ratings on different cars and different car brands to see okay, which type of car is going to give us the least amount of issues over time? Again, you know, you don't want a car to just be a money pit, right? So with that in mind, we were willing to get a loan for something that would help to sustain us over time. And the third boundary we put in place was that we had to be able to realistically pay off the loan within six months or less based on our current income. I know it's easy, a lot of people go into debts expecting, well, if I pick up this extra job, if I do this, that, or the other, then I'll be able to pay it off. But for us, knowing that we had these two jobs and that was our total income at the time, we wanted to make sure that whatever loan we took out, we could pay off in that time. And, and by the grace of God, we were able to pay it off actually in four months ahead yes. of schedule, so. Yes, obviously there are a lot of people who you know, may think like, oh, you should totally not do that. You know, yeah. you gotta pay interest and all of this stuff. Yeah. But I think the key is doing something that you can pay off quickly so that you're not paying a lot of money towards exactly. interest. Mm -hmm. And so I think the, the lesson that we learn is that life can be unpredictable yeah. at times. Um, and there are times where, you know, you just are faced with a decision where you just gotta do what you gotta do. Exactly. And uh, we've been through this twice now, mm -hmm. once with, with your car, car mm -hmm. and then once with mine. And so I think as long as you know what you're capable of doing, mm -hmm. you know, you know what you can handle, then you don't have to be afraid to make a decision where, you know, you might have to 
take out a loan in this case. Exactly. And if you're at the point though in your marriage where you still need to grow and discipline in those financial areas before you feel like you can stretch yourself to be able to take out a loan, that is totally okay. We are not suggesting that you just go out all willy-nilly and get whatever you can. We're talking about realistic boundaries that you could use to step in and then step out of debt if necessary. Right. And this is obviously something that we decided to do, but by no means are we saying that this is what you should be doing uh, in, in, in your marriage. Obviously evaluate your current situation and what's feasible and the wisest for you. So just keep that in mind. Right. And we'd love to know, have you ever taken out a car loan? If so, what type of boundaries or rules did you use before you took out the loan? Let us know in the comments. And if you found value in this video, we'd appreciate it if you hit the like button, share this with someone you know, and subscribe so that you can receive more content like this from Marriage Inside Out.